Okay guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about what happens if you bomb an interview. And this is something that has absolutely happened this week directly in my own business with one of my students where she came out of this interview. Oh my goodness, I felt so sick for her. She felt very just humiliated, but how do we not feel like that? And how do we ultimately change the narrative during the interview so that we don't feel like we bombed it or like we humiliated ourselves? Let's talk about it. We talk about the good and all the excitement of working remote, especially if you land a remote job and transitioning into something new, but jumping into something new can also be very scary. And today I wanna share something with you that absolutely happened in my business with one of my students. What happened was my student this week was prepared for an interview. She got the job description from the recruiter. She met with several of the recruiters from the company and she thought she was well prepared. She knew what was actually a nice to have for the job and she also knew what was a requirement for the job. So she studied the job description as we show you how to do Enroll to QA. She prepared herself. She looked up some of the things that was nice to have, but when she went into the interview, the things that she thought was nice to have was actually the requirement for the position. So what happened is during this interview, the interviewer actually asked her some basic questions, things that she can actually answer really quickly. And then she went down to that requirement that she thought was a nice to have per the recruiters also, and basically almost made her feel kind of humiliated, right? It really injected a lot of fear, uncertainty, imposter syndrome to keep moving because this lady kind of pounded her like, you do not know what you're talking about. Whoa, that just, I can understand how that can tear anyone down. So what happened was my student reached out to me. She shared with me how she felt. She was like, I'm going to back up. I'm going to take a step back for about a week or so. I really don't feel good about this. And so what happened is as a mentor and as a coach, that really made me feel bad So for her. And I really wanted to help coach her through that process. You see, a lot of times we get, we're going after something that's already new and we get set aside in, inside of imposter syndrome and you're very close, but we take a step back when things get hard. We take a step back when challenges arise. And so I didn't want her to do that. So I got on an actual live call with her in my group and I allowed her to be open and vulnerable with the process and what actually happened. And in that, here's what I was able to discover. I was actually able to discover that it wasn't her fault. There was just a few things that she needed to control for the next time, but it wasn't her fault. You see, ultimately the recruiters actually set her up, unfortunately in a bad situation and placed her in an interview that she probably wasn't the best candidate for. Now, the problem with that was there was actually a miscommunication between the interview company and the actual company. There was actually a miscommunication on what was actually nice to have versus what was the actual requirements for the position. If the requirements was that other skill set, my student more than likely wouldn't have actually taken the interview because she would have known that, you know, this is a requirement. They want you to be more proficient. To be honest, she couldn't speak to that level for that skill set. So that would have been an interview that she actually would have withdrawn from or not moved forward from, right? So that she didn't put herself into a state of uncomfortability. So what happened is that my student, like so, prepared prepared for the job interview and prepared from a perspective of being familiar and knowledgeable of it and not that she's proficient. And that's how she showed up in an interview. But the interviewer wanted the candidate to actually be proficient and started asking her more questions as if she was proficient, essentially almost making, actually humiliating her as if she tried to come into the interview being this imposter of this type of skill set. With that, I was able to coach my student through and let her know how she can actually improve and change the narrative and control the interview the next time something like that, if it ever happened again. Let's talk about that. So first, she did the right thing by speaking with the recruiters, but they're somehow she still ended up moving in a process as a candidate for this position, right? So really the recruiter should have been a, did a better job to make sure that she met the qualifications per the actual company and what they wanted, okay? So that would be the first step to protect her. Now next, inside of that interview, if it got uncomfortable, you wanna make sure that if they start asking you something that's at a more proficient level that you do not have, you wanna make sure that you do not say, I don't know. You don't want to say you don't know, but you do want to be able to speak and say, I'm familiar or I'm, I'm knowledgeable of this and this is what I have done or I'm not familiar 
familiar with this, but this is what I have done. Now, the reason why this is important for you to use the words strategically familiar, exposed, experienced, and knowledgeable of, you want to use those very strategically because let's just say, for instance, if they go down a rabbit hole of speaking about a skill set more proficiently, you've already been honest with that you've been either just maybe familiar or knowledgeable with or exposed to something, but not that you actually have experience because per your previous jobs, maybe you didn't use that process or tool or system. So honesty is the best policy and making sure that you use your words wisely. Now, next, another way she could have controlled the call is when the interviewer actually starts to ask more proficient questions in an area that you're not familiar with, you can politely, you know, respond with, well, at this time, I'm not familiar with this, but this is what I am exposed and experienced with. However, if you are looking for that skill set, I am open to learning it. However, this time I don't feel that I am at a proficient level that you're looking for if that's actually the experience that you're looking for. So really that puts you in a position where you're now changing the narrative of the call, you're controlling the call or the interview so that they don't just keep coming at you in a proficient way and you've been very upfront and knowledgeable of what you do know and if you expose them to what you do know versus you giving them these hopes and promises that you're this proficient person in this area. This allows them to see you honestly for who you are and to decide if they even think that be because you were honest, we'll just still take you as you are and we'll train you on the job. You see, I've been able to land my last two jobs for being honest, honest with my actual experience level or just being familiar with something versus me having proficient experience in that skill set. So you want to first speak to the recruiters and make sure you know what's actually nice to have versus the actual requirement. Then you want to also use your words strategic, familiar, knowledgeable of, and exposed very strategically when you speak about your experience. And then you want to just be honest. You want to be honest. You want to be open to say, hey, if I'm not the best person for this role, I do understand. However, this is where my current knowledge lies. All right. So that's how you actually don't bomb an interview. And that's how we're going to learn from these lessons. And we're going to continue to stay in the market and skill up. Okay, so there you have it. Now you know why I say there's no reason why we should be bombing interviews and this is how you don't bomb your next interview. So if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe to my channel where I'm going to give you more weekly tips on how you can actually break into tech, create more freedom and fun a better life. And also be sure to check me out on IG at at I am Jennifer Geddes where I also do behind the scenes of a day in the life of a software tester and me building my business and working remote. So until then, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.